At the end of September, we visited some friends on the little island of Tosinge, which lies to the south of the slightly bigger island that we live on. I thought I would take you along, give you a little peek of the countryside and seaside and forests there, as well as of my dream cottage and near the end a small castle or manor. We had a lot of beautiful days in September this year, and thankfully also during the weekend that we went to Tosinge. The people we visited are originally friends of my partner's parents, so they're a generation older than us. But apart from the fact that they're really nice people, we've visited them a few times before here in Tosinge, because I lost my parents years ago, my partner lost his mother about seven years ago, and though his father is still alive, he's what you might call an introverted hermit. So we've stayed in touch with these friends, also for the sake of our daughter. It's nice for both her and for us to spend some time with people from a different generation. They have no grandchildren of their own, so it's a win for all of us. This is not my dream cottage, by the way, just a lovely house in a clearing. Our friend's house here is just a small summer cottage. They're currently in the process of selling their home in the city because they want to move down here on a more permanent basis. During the short while that we were here, I really came to understand why. Imagine being able to walk in these woods every day during the different seasons. Here we are approaching the cottage that I saw for the first time two years ago and which I loved even more this time round. They have chickens, or someone does, because the house is mostly rented out. The farmer who owns it, strangely, doesn't live in it. So while we were really trespassing, it was quite harmless, as no one was there. The main attraction for me is the forest nearby, practically on their doorstep. The fact that the sea is right next to the house is an added bonus, and they do say that living near water makes people calmer. Mm -hmm. Look at these hydrangeas. They're enormous. You probably can't quite tell, but if you look at my hand next to it, oh, I should pick that one. That's just my ring. Gorgeous. This whole house. It's just amazing. The problem is, how am I supposed to walk away from this house now? I can't unsee it. I can't undream of it. Well, we walked on from the house, through more of the forest and closer to the water again. Even my teenage daughter was taken by the natural beauty of the place. I couldn't help feeling it was good for her with the small antidote to the demands of social media that her generation have been and are continually influenced by. As you can see, there are many beech trees here. This is the part of the country where they first come into leaf in the spring. I guess this means that they're the first to shed their leaves as well but that's the cycle of nature. I wonder what these are called. I've never seen anything like it before. Some kind of fungus that grows on trees, dead trees, obviously.
just when I thought one house was my dream house, I see another one. Well, I would never be able to afford this one anyway, so uh, I just look at it from afar. Gosh. I don't know if you can see them, but there were a family of pheasants running around in this field. They began to panic a little when I stopped the car. You can hear them and see them everywhere on the island. Our friends told us that every Christmas the people who live on this farm put a Santa Claus up into this carriage, which of course made me want to come back in December and check it out. Here I decided to do a voiceover because the wind was so strong that it made it near impossible to hear what I was saying out there on the country road. I'm basically saying that I felt no great desire to leave the peace and quiet of the countryside, the forest, the water, the animals. Loving it. It almost felt like a minor assault to have to return to the city. My daughter was content to get back to the city and her friends though. The next morning, our friend went bathing in the sea, so-called winter bathing, which is supposed to be really good for you. Judging by her abundance of energy, I believe it. But I must confess I was too much of a chicken to join her, though I am considering giving it a try. I am, after all, a descendant of the Vikings. On the day that we arrived, we drove past a huge group of swans. There were maybe 30 or more but most of them were gone when I went back to film them. Then we saw some as we headed toward the manor house on our way home. The castle was built in 1639 by the Danish King Christian IV. Unfortunately, I couldn't stop here and film the main building because there was a car right behind us. You'll get a glimpse in a moment. Just documenting that I'm actually here and that it's not just some random camera that's everywhere. So I'm not actually sure that I'm allowed to uh, park where I did. Um, and I've been here for Christmas when the place was open for parking and there was a whole Christmas thing going on at the castle or the manor. It's called Veldemarslot, which means Veldemar Castle. Veldemar's Castle. It's really beautiful, but right now it's seemingly closed for visitors. So in there you can just see part of it. I'll leave you with the water and the swans and hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. 